Hi, everybody. I'm Leslie Randall. I'm the GYN Oncology Director at VCU uh, Massey Cancer Center. And, um, you know, behind me here, McCormick Place, um, which we're missing this year at ASCO. Um, so I wanted to share with you a few of the abstracts that I was asked to uh, review at ASCO. I'm going to share some slides with you. This is not my presentation from ASCO. Um, that, of course, um, is um, under the uh, registered content. So if you are interested to see more, um, definitely uh, register uh, for the meeting. Um, the content is on demand. And um, I got three, I had three abstracts that were kind of a mixed uh, variety of um, studies. Two were in early stage cervical cancer, one sentinel nodes, and the second for adjuvant therapy after radical hysterectomy. And then I did have a very interesting trial of immunotherapy for um, GTN. So let me share, see if I can get this to work. There we go. Um, so the Sentinel node study was a retrospective review of the combination of Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 populations. So these were studies that, look, that sought to establish the negative predictive value of Sentinel lymph node biopsy and cervical cancer. And um, in both studies, found to be 100% if patients mapped bilaterally and sent to call to those results were attained with the help of also intraoperative uh, frozen section. Um, so there were um, 345 patients reviewed retrospectively in this study presented at ASCO, and they saw no difference in disease-free or disease-specific overall survival between the sentinel node group and the pelvic lymphadenectomy groups. Um, those um, hazard ratios, um, confidence intervals, both crossing one and neither statistically insignificant. Um, inter also, um, only three nodal recurrences in the sentinel node group versus one in the full lymphadenectomy group. Um, so apparently very good outcomes in this retrospective look back at Sentinel 1 and 2. Um, however, it's a very low risk group. Um, if you look at the entry criteria for those trials, you'll see that especially for Sentinel 2, where they're really starting to refine the criteria for whom the um, Sentinel node biopsy is the most predictive, really starting to get down to a low risk group. In addition, um, these investigators for this analysis did uh, omit patients who had positive lymph nodes. So 40-odd um, patients with positive nodes um, not in this analysis. So not completely um, indicative of the whole picture. Um, this is being followed by Sentacol 3, which is a prospective look at outcomes um, related uh, survival outcomes in women who have pelvic um, lymph node dissection versus the sentinel um, node biopsy. And so this is an ongoing trial. It's already accruing. It has 950 planned um, subjects. And um, so this, I'm sure, will take several years uh, to complete. Um, but interestingly, in this trial as well, they're separating out the um, node positive group. So this is not unlike the um, vulvar cancer sentinel node sort of series of trials where um, with 173 and groins v Borns B, we looked more at the uh, performance of sentinel lymph node uh, biopsy. And then with Groins B2, recently presented at SGO, looking at those um, outcomes um, in these, in these um, sentinel patients. So stay in tune for that. Um, second trial that was presented was an, a trial looking to escalate adjuvant treatment. So this is a study that enrolled women after radical hysterectomy that had all uh, any of these adverse pathological factors. So criteria that we would normally see as being um, either an intermediate risk group or a high risk group. Here they were all considered um, at risk and all eligible to randomize to any of these three arms. So RT versus cisplatin radiation, you know, common um, treatment arms in, in the United States and then um, looking at the addition of paclitaxel and cisplatin two cycles prior to pelvic RT and then two cycles after pelvic radiation. And so they termed this sequential chemoradiation. Um, the results they showed were that there was an advantage of sequential chemoradiation 
um, across the entire study population and an intent to treat analysis. Um, that was also seen in the per protocol analysis, but that was more pronounced benefit in the intent to treat. Um, if you look at the per protocol analysis, the, um, the concurrent chemo RT arm was equivalent to the radiation only arm. Um, and only 60% of patients finished the concurrent chemo radiation treatment arm. And so sequential chemo radiation was found to be superior, but it appears that concurrent chemo RT really underperformed compared to what we are accustomed to seeing um, in that treatment arm in this study. Um, and when they broke it down between the high risk group and the intermediate risk group by GOG criteria, um, most of the sequential chemotherapy benefit was really driven by that high risk group. Um, so there was really no declared control arm in this study. There was no clear sample size calculation, and it was not stratified by intermediate or high risk factors. And so I want to use this to encourage you to continue to enroll patients on GOG 273 and 724, which are looking at um, precisely this question, but in separate um, treatment populations. Um, so these trials are currently ongoing. And then last but definitely not least, this uh, first prospective trial of single agent checkpoint inhibitor here at Valimab in women with um, uh, gestational trophoblastic disease, the so-called trophimmune trial. Um, if you look at our treatment paradigm for um, GTN, the group that was enrolled to this study and reported here is this um, low risk group treated with methotrexate or actinomycin D that progressed after this treatment that are moving on to receive emico therapy. So this is the group um, that was captured in this trophimmune cohort. There were 15 patients enrolled. Um, there were eight complete responses that were um, of a duration of up to eight months um, recorded so far in the study. Um, seven progressions were, um, were noted and those women were triaged then onto emico therapy. And there was one term pregnancy um, in a patient who had had a complete response to Velimab um, in this cohort. Um, so the, you know, this is very exciting data. Clearly, it would be much easier to take Velimab than to take Amico therapy, but I would argue that we still need more data. Um, we need long-term duration of response. Eight months is really not enough to see, is this a viable treatment um, moving forward? Also would be important to see what is the outcome in the patients who disease progressed on Avelumab and then they went on to receive Amico, did they have the response uh, rate that we would expect to see? Um, you know, 96% is the cure rate that was reported in the sharing cross experience with uh, in, for, in women receiving Amico as either a first line treatment or as even a second line um, treatment. So a high bar there um, to overcome even with a less toxic therapy. Um, we have ongoing trials um, looking at the use of checkpoint inhibitors in um, choriocarcinoma, the SWAB 1609 DART trial, um, using a combination of nivolumab, ipilimumab. There's also an arm on this study that will enroll any pdl one positive um, tumor to receive nivo nivolumab alone. The, uh, GTN tumors are almost all PDL1 positive, so would uh, likely um, qualify to be enrolled on that arm. These uh, trophimmune investigators also looking at doing another study in France, trophimet, combining Avelumab with methotrexate for low risk GTN, and then a Korean study looking at pembrolizumab in the chemo resistant patient population. In the United States, based on several case reports in the literature, we already have an NCCM listing for nivolumab or pembrolizumab for drug-resistant um, GTN. So GTN, uh, checkpoint inhibitors clearly active in GTN, just where they fall in the treatment paradigm has yet to be completely elucidated. Um, definitely for use in our drug-resistant patients, but whether we are using this yet to replace uh, Emico or using it in addition to methotrexate, we really need um, more data. So thanks for your attention. I hope to see everyone in person again soon. Um, everyone uh, hang in there and stay well.